It's been busy lately in science with many new discoveries from many different fields. So here is this month's list of 10 unusual scientific discoveries for August of 2023. Number 10. Ancient flutes might have had another purpose. One thing we know from many archaeological sites across the globe is that the idea of a flute is extremely old. The earliest ones typically made from animal bones, specifically birds of prey. These flutes are surprisingly modern, bearing drilled holes for the fingers to adjust the sound. Not unlike modern instruments like the tin whistle. It's always been assumed that the use of these flutes is the same today as it was then, for music. Someone, or many people, long ago realized that sounds can be made by blowing into tubes, and that can be controlled by drilling holes. But new evidence from 12,000-year-old flutes, found at a site called Ainan Malaha in Israel, showed that maybe there was another reason. The flutes come from the wing bones of waterfall, known to exist at a lake at this site, and the flutes appear to be human altered and drilled, rather than the work of mice or scavengers. Scientists were able to create replicas of these flutes, and they didn't quite match up with flute reconstructions made from European examples that seemed to have had a musical function. These flutes, however, appear to have been more intended as bird calls, perhaps to manipulate the very birds of prey the flutes were made from. We know also from this site that the birds' talons were also used as tools and potentially as jewelry. In a way, this should perhaps not be surprising. We modern humans make both musical instruments, but also completely separate bird calls for hunting ducks to this day. So it may be a case where there were two types of flutes for two different reasons. But also that maybe they were dual use, as both calls and instruments. You could play with an interesting idea here. It may be that the lines between making birdsong and human music were once rather blurred and that long ago the two may have had some early relation. Number 9. The Weird Physics of the Monarch Butterfly Few members of the insect world are as majestic and beautiful as the butterflies, the monarch being among the most amazing. But what's even stranger about the monarch butterfly is that it's actually a migratory insect, with some populations of them traveling as far as 4,000 kilometers between Canada and the forests in the mountains of Mexico where they spend winter. But there's an oddity here, in that the monarchs have white spots on their wings that closely related species do not, and it seems to play a role in migration. Studies of migrating monarchs showed that in a sampling of 400 individuals, the most successful in migrating had 3% more white on their wings than black. This seemingly makes little biological sense, though it might as studies continue. But what might be going on is physics instead of biology. The monarchs with more white limit the absorption of the sun's radiation, whereas the black areas absorb it. There may be a difference there that changes airflow and makes them slightly better at flight. If so, one has to wonder if there is some active natural selection at work in some monarch populations. Number 8. Don't be a long-necked reptile. Sometimes biology can go in a wrong direction, but for the right reason. During the Triassic period, there was a large population of species of marine reptiles that had unusually long necks, some up to 2 meters. The reason for this is unknown, but one idea is that a very long neck might have made for better fishing. You hide your body deep in the dark or on the ocean floor itself. An adaptation that seems to have been successful is these species lasted for at least 175 million years in the fossil record, but it came at a cost. Recently, two fossilized skeletons from two different species were studied, both of the genus Tanistropheus, both being about 242 million years old. Both showed brutal neck wounds. One spine was shortened by three vertebrae and the other by five with ample evidence of bite marks and one a broken neck. This seems to indicate an attack by a predator that severed the neck, though the skulls were found. Why they weren't disassociated is unknown, but they were prey to something, and with such long necks may not have known anything was happening until it was too late. Number 7. The Gravity Hole in the Ocean Floor One enduring mystery about planet Earth is a huge relative drop in gravity at a geographic point just south of India in the Indian Ocean. It's a relative drop. You don't notice a difference other than by measurement. 
but there are variations in Earth's gravity due to the density of matter underlying it. This actually distorts Earth's shape slightly, and the differences actually cause depressions in the ocean. And this dip in the Indian Ocean actually causes the water to dip over 100 meters below average sea level. What's causing this is unknown, and has ranged from meteorite craters to other explanations. But more recent work shows that it might actually be due to low-density magma plumes deep below the Earth, creating a kind of low-density hole brought on by the subduction of plates and the geology surrounding it, rather than what's directly underneath. Number 6. Shark Tooth Eaters One widely known fact about sharks is that some of them have very different teeth than much of the rest of the animal kingdom. They can routinely lose them, either to just falling out or getting caught in prey, only for a new tooth to rotate into place as a replacement. And lots of sharks' teeth end up on the ocean floor, especially when sharks die. But lots of things die and fall to the ocean floor, including whale carcasses and many other things. In 2002, a type of worm known as Osidax was discovered that possesses no digestive tract as we know it, rather relying on symbiotic bacteria contained within their bodies to absorb collagen from whale bones. Their name translates to bone eater, and they're often termed zombie worms. But researchers recently wondered if they could go further than whale bones. Turns out they can, and recent fossil evidence shows that these worms have been around longer than whales have existed in the fossil record. So what exactly did they eat before the whales came along? Researchers wondered if it was cartilaginous fish, some of the oldest fish still around. So they took some shark jaws and immersed them deep in the ocean, at depths where the worms exist. All remains of the sharks were quickly gone except the teeth, but it turns out the worms could colonize and secrete acid and get inside the shark's teeth to get at the soft dentine within. It may well be that when whale bones are scarce, these worms can resort to shark's teeth to get by. Number 5. The Fastest Free Star in the Milky Way There are several different types of supernova, but one is known as Type 1a. Usually what happens here is you have two stars orbiting each other, one a white dwarf. The white dwarf robs the other star of material until it becomes massive enough to explode. It's thought, however, that it's possible for a variant of this to happen where you have two white dwarfs orbiting very tightly, and thus very rapidly, until they collide or one explodes. Because of the speeds involved, stars can get launched at very high speed as a result. Evidence from the Gaia star catalog shows evidence of white dwarfs moving at these kinds of speeds, with little other explanation than this scenario, and one in particular is moving at a brisk 2,285 kilometers per second which breaks a record for a free-moving star in the galaxy that isn't stuck getting whipped around a black hole. Interestingly, this allows for one avenue for studying stars from other nearby galaxies, as at those speeds they could conceivably join the Milky Way and get trapped here, and examples may lurk out there somewhere. Number 4. Early Neanderthal Art In the Loire Valley region of France, there is a cave known as La Roche Cotard, that presents an interesting mystery. This cave shows evidence of having been sealed at a minimum of 57,000 years ago based on sediment dating. This is interesting because there is what appears to be hominid artwork inside, but done at a time before Homo sapiens is known to have been in the area, which occurred around 45,000 years ago, at least in mass, though there is some evidence of earlier incursions. There are also distinctive tools known as Mousterian tools that have been linked to Neanderthal sites in Europe, and Neanderthals have, as of only 2018, been linked to cave artwork. But this site is very old for that. The artwork appears as handprints and scrapes on the cave wall, done in soft rock, along with lines, ovals, and circles that do seem arranged in patterns, along with dots which as we know from recent work with Homo sapiens cave paintings may have deep meanings. Some of the work also appears to have been done with bone, antler, or stone tools. In addition to that, artifacts from the cave have been interpreted as symbols, one of which being a face, which would be rare if it were a Homo sapiens site. We know that the Neanderthals interbred with Homo sapiens, so it's probably not all that surprising that in many ways they would act like us and interchange ideas with us, including ideas about cave art. Perhaps, had we never shown up, the Neanderthals might be the ones launching rockets and going to space today. 
Number 3. Bats in the Magnetic Field It's been shown that a number of animals make use of the Earth's magnetic field for navigation, including some reptiles, some arthropods, and birds. The sense, known as magnetoreception, is not at all well understood, and there are several hypotheses and none are proven. One mundane possibility is something to do with iron-based receptors, but more intriguingly are experiments done with birds. Caged migratory birds will become restless at migration time and orient themselves in the direction they would normally migrate. When certain fields are applied, it confuses this and would not do so in an iron-based system. This opens up the possibility that it's actually due to a quantum mechanical effect, meaning that birds may be navigating by quantum magnetoreception. Rather unsettling indeed. But so far this has never been seen in migratory mammals until now. It was formerly a mystery as to just how bats migrate, since they are nocturnal and can't do it from landmarks. And they also can't use their echolocation abilities due to distances. A group of bats were exposed to magnetic fields before being released. When the field was oriented one way, the bats went in one direction. The other way, then they went in the opposite direction. And when both were applied, there was much confusion, showing that bats seemed to be capable of magnetoreception. Number 2. Humans Make Seagulls Hungry Birds known as herring gulls native to Europe are problematic. They are seen in Britain and are known to act as kleptoparasites. In other words, they snatch food. This is actually a complex behavior that suggests the birds are intelligent and can plan out their heists. This also means that they must be watching their potential victims very carefully. As it turns out, they were watching much closer than anyone knew. Researchers studying the birds would put food items in different colored bags to see if the gulls reacted to the difference. It turns out the gulls favored the bag that was the same color as the one the observer was snacking out of, meaning that the gulls knew the human was eating a certain type of snack and chose that as well, meaning they knew what the researcher was eating and thought they needed to do so as well. So apparently you can convince a seagull to eat what you eat, at least within reason, suggesting a high level of observation skills and social skills in the birds. Number 1. Unidentified Sounds in the Stratosphere the atmosphere is obviously full of sound. It's the palette that everything we hear is painted upon, and indeed can make sound on its own. This cacophony, however, doesn't really end near the surface of the Earth, but continues upward into the stratosphere. Scientists exploring the stratosphere with high-altitude balloons wanted to see what they'd hear if they attached microphones to them. They expected to hear meteorite entries, aircraft, sounds from below, storms, and so on, and they did but throughout they would also hear sounds they couldn't readily identify. This led to further experiments with specialized balloons that could float in the stratosphere for hours and listen to very low frequency infrasound. Launching over 50 of them over seven years, they were able to determine that the stratosphere is different in infrasound than it is on the surface of the Earth. This worked in some ways kind of like a filter. Sound from the ground would get reflected back downward, leaving a different profile that high. They were able to identify some of the sounds, but many very low frequency sounds remain unexplained and of unknown origin. The best bet is that it's atmospheric turbulence somehow generating them, or a mix of causes. But further study is needed. Oddly, however, these balloons have an interesting origin in their own right. They descend back to the US Army Air Force's mysterious Project Mogul balloons, which were highly classified for decades even after the program ceased. They were designed to listen for infrasound signals from nuclear tests in the Soviet Union during the early days of their testing. A crash of one of these balloons remains the official U.S. government story for the purported UFO crash at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. Further development of this technology could eventually allow for the deployment of such balloons in the atmosphere of Venus to study its volcanic activity. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently with a rather full month. You'll note that there was only one entry on this one for space science, and that's because I'll soon be doing a separate 10 list for astronomy. There have been a lot of new discoveries recently. Look for it later this month, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer, and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live. <laughs>